Howdy folks, welcome back to another exciting video. Today, we are back on my beautiful and immaculate 1977 Ford Mustang Cobra II. Now, if you remember the videos on this car, it was sitting for almost three decades at that point. Uh, we got it to run, we got it to drive, and the little 302 with a four speed was quite a lot of fun. Now, we didn't stop there. We wanted to make it a little bit more powerful. We put a cam in it, a four barrel intake and carburetor, dual exhaust out the back, HEI distributor, and really nice 15 by nine wheel tire. So this thing, it was pretty fun. On the autocross, it was great. The drag strip, mm, not so much. But I wanna go back to Holly Ford Fest this weekend, but make it much better. So we've got two things for the Mustang II. One, we've got a quick performance nine inch, 373 gears on the way. We're gonna put that in. And two, we've got nitrous for this car because I wanna see how much faster can we make this car on a budget? So hopefully it doesn't blow up. Hopefully we have a good time this weekend, but stick around to the end of the video and see how much better can we make the Cobra II for next to nothing. I hope you survive. So on my second channel, and if you haven't subscribed to that, you need to go do that so you don't miss out on extra content. I had made a video. It'll be in the top right of the video right now. Uh, we had a video, whoa! Holy moly, that's a lot of wasps. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna put that down. All right guys, sorry, video's canceled. I'll see you next year. I'm kidding, of course, but all I have is a little bit of brake cleaner. Oh, it's empty, great. Please, hey, guys, listen. I know we've had our issues, let's just, you don't sting me, I don't kill you. We cool with that? Is that fine? I see a spider, there's a tree growing up through the bottom of the power steering pump. You know, that's okay. This is okay. So before I had uh, actually taken this carburetor off to make another vehicle run, and it's a good thing I stuck a glove down in the intake because it looks like something was living under the hood here. Where's the hood prop? Did I lose the hood prop? Oh no, wait. Ah! Oh, there it is. Excuse me guys, I'm just gonna grab this. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. How did you get wedged in there? There we go. Where does this go again? I think there. Yeah, well, yeah, all right, there. that's the ticket. Okay, there was something living in here, but it's still there. The engine is in the car, so that's good. Yeah, this little glove saved this car. Ooh, that would have been bad. Excuse, man, wasp, what's up? What's the deal, dude? I got a glove now. You can't attack me. And a paper towel. Oh yeah, we're good. Everything's clean on the inside. So we gotta do a little vacuuming because uh, something was living in here. Dude, these wasps, I can see them. They're ready to sting me. They're just searching for me. What I had done was pulled this carburetor because I had planned to put it on my red 65 Dart 4-speed. But unfortunately, the uh, spacing on the intake was wrong, so it could only fit an Edelbrock. So I put that on there instead, and then I never came back out here to put the carburetor back on. So, this thing has been sitting without a carburetor on it for eh, a couple months, so it's okay. Here's the good news, though. I left everything where it needs to be. The carburetor never got on anything else, so it's just ready to go back on the Mustang. All the settings should be exactly like it was when it left the car. I said that with a little too much confidence, didn't I? Oh, there we go. It's like I never even come out here and ruined it. I wonder if that battery holds any kind of charge. It did whenever I had it running last, <laughs> which again, that was probably a year ago. So unfortunately, it may be dead. We can try it though, just for fun. Gosh, I hope I know where the key is. That would help. Oh, oh he's on my can of brake cleaner. I swear that was probably 30 wasps in that one little nest. And they're everywhere, they're so mad. That's a huge nest. We'll have to evict them, unfortunately. Sorry guys, but you didn't pay rent. Time's up. I gave you plenty of chances. 
and you just really don't look that happy right now. I guess I would be too if somebody come and disrupted my home. Okay, man, I'll, I'm getting out. Chill out. I put the battery on, turn the key in, nothing happens. So we're just going to go ahead and remove you. Oh, get out of there. Put you back in this place. Okay, I don't see any vacuum leaks. I hope there's fuel in the tank. It's at least a year old, so that's good. Anyway, nothing else to do but to try it. Let me check coolant too. Let's see if it pushed any out. Eh. Come on. It's a little low, but it's okay. Just a little bit. Dump a little bit down the carb. That's a gallon. Oh. oh this battery is charged. I know for a fact it is. It's just uh, loose cables. There we go. Let's try it again. Ah! Oh, she's sputtering. Come to life. Come to life. Building up oil pressure. Come on. The choke isn't hooked up. There we go. Hey, look at there. We got about 40 pounds of oil pressure. Sweet. I'm just gonna let it sit here and warm up. I'm not gonna touch anything until it's warm. The choke is wide open. Did I even wire it in? I have no idea. Let me just try to help it out a little bit. A little fast idle. Woo! A bunch of debris. Yeah, I never wired in the choke. No, that's okay. There's plant life all in the pulleys and belts. Yeah, you just kind of warm up and do your thing there, girl. She's ready now. She is ready. All right, let's take her up to the shop. Just like old times, huh? Smells like something's burning, as usual. Oh, why is the clutch not doing anything? Interesting. Is the clutch sticking? Huh, let me turn it off, put it in gear, and then crank it. Oh, that's not good. Why is the clutch not working? I got my foot completely pushed down on the clutch, and it's not working. Okay, this is not normal. So uh, clutch in, key. Like my foot's all the way down in the clutch and we're moving. So that's not good. I hope I didn't break the cable. I very well could have. It might've been seized and the first time I pushed it, it broke it. I didn't hear anything though. We'll just have to check, see if it's in a bind or something. We're gonna pull it up on the lift in the shop. 
so we can actually start working on it. Let me get in here without breaking something and I'll update you guys in a second. I brought out a lizard with me. What's up, dude? Here for the ride? I regret to inform you that we've stalled. Oh, the door buzzer works. Oh, thank goodness. Now we're good. Yeah. Well, I tried adjusting the clutch. I maxed it out basically, and it still doesn't want to work. I even consulted the dang Chilton's manual that I got specifically for Mustang 2s, and I still can't get it to work. I see the diaphragm moving. I see the clutch cable is moving. I think the clutch is just stuck. So I'm just gonna go out in the field and just try and do some laps, see if I can work the pedal back and forth and just get it to come unstuck. Cause it was working when I drove it to the spot it was sitting in. I've been doing laps and it hasn't worked. So I just got on the driveway, you can see the cloud and I just romped on it as hard as I could. And guess what? Clutch works. <laughs> I bet it just got rusty and caked over and didn't want to work anymore. But it works again. Yeah. Well, the clutch is working now. And there's my lizard. Oh, there he went. So he rode that whole time and he said, yeah, I'm out of here. So now we have a clutch that works. Now we can get to the fun. Oh, go, go, lizard, go, 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 buddy, go. Yeah. He's flying. Anyway, we can get to the fun stuff now that we have a clutch working. I thought that we were about to have to like pull the clutch out and fix something. That was nerve wracking. We're good now, folks. Come here. 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 No, 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 no. Step one, get this old original drive shaft out of the way. Wow, there's a lot of play in the pinion of this rear end. Woof, she is rough, 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 rough. But that's not gonna stop us. Oh, come on. In, come on, please, hello. Rotate, and there we go. And out, beautiful. Okay, we've made some progress under here. So, the eight inch Ford. It's pretty much ready to come out. I've got U-bolts on both sides completely removed. Shocks are completely removed. The drive shaft is out of the way. We've got the brake hose disconnected. I put a uh, stopper up in there to keep it from leaking fluid so it'd be a little easier to bleed. All we have to do now is drop the axle out. So this should just be hanging on for dear life. Hopefully we don't make it fall out of here, but we're gonna be okay. I think it's gonna work just fine. Uh, the next step here, we're going to lower the lift down onto the ground and then put a jack up under it, get it out from under here because we have to remove some things like the brakes. I'll explain why here in a minute because we've got to prep for a quick performance 9 inch. Well, now that the rear axle is out and there's some room, I couldn't stand the fact of putting that nice, pretty rear axle in the car without just a little touching up. Now listen, this car outside is, it's rough. I don't really care about making it look pretty. I just wanna make it look one color. So I will get the spider webs and the uh, random bits of hay out of the inner fenders and around the frame rails as best I can. But like I said, I'm not really too concerned about looks. I just hate to put this axle in with this ugly, <laughs> rusty rear. So all we're gonna do, I'm not even gonna prep it. I'm just gonna take some Rust-Oleum black and do a little bit of this. Oh yeah, rust and all. Mm. If I was gonna do this legit, I would pull the leaf springs out and uh, new bushings and then paint everything after sanding it. But that looks much better. Yeah, oh yeah, that's restored, man. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apologize in advance. I know it's ugly. Yeah, you know, kind of fog 
all the floors, the inner fenders, and restored. Hey, it looks great on camera. That's all that really matters, right? <laughs> no, but seriously though, it's perfectly fine. Um, if the car was nicer, then obviously I would care more, but I just want this thing to look good and rip. So that's all that we're doing here. So a little black where it counts, and we're gonna put this axle in. Well, here it is. We've got the old dinky eight inch rear axle out of the car. And as you can tell, it's, it does well. It does what it needs to do. It does move that car, but with the 3.0 rear gear, it does not have a lot of bottom end torque. So I want to kind of fix all that with something here. Now, we're not gonna throw this away. We're not gonna just ditch it. We're gonna use some parts off of it and you know maybe use it for a later date. But this is what's going back in the car. Now, let me tell you, you might wanna sit down for this. One sec. Wow, this thing's heavy. Oh. Beef. It's what's for dinner. This is a quick performance nine inch. So we've got center section, we've got axles, brake lines, everything from quick performance. They wanted to make sure this car was gonna hold up. And this, man, is this awesome. I was having trouble finding gear sets for this thing, to be honest with you. An eight inch rear axle for a Ford, you can find a dropout center section. You really can't find a good gear set. So I called Quick Performance and said, hey, what can we do as far as a center section? He said, well, we can make you one. We do offer eight inch, or we can go ahead and upgrade you to a nine inch. And we'll be able to transfer all the new brakes and stuff that I've already done to the car onto this axle. We're gonna keep it four lug for now. We're gonna upgrade in the future just because the event is literally tomorrow. We're gonna keep it simple, bolt everything together to where we can actually use this car and use it effectively. I can't wait to see this in the car. This is gonna look good. We've got a little bit of stuff to do beforehand. Let's go check it out. Well, I figured, oh, the best way to work on this axle is to use the car as like a workbench. Ah, let's go ahead and put this bad boy up in its new home. One and two, yeah. Oh, might have to clean up the studs a little bit. Yeah, they's a little rusty, but that's okay. Now it ain't over for this old girl. We still got some stuff we've got to take from it. What you can see on this side is I've actually already taken out uh, the brakes. So back when I did this car originally, I rebuilt everything on the brakes, front and rear. So all this is very new <laughs> still. I mean, it's got plenty of life left in it. Now, the thing is, we're going for simplicity. We want to basically use what we already have. So that's why we're taking all this, brakes and everything, and putting it on the new axle. These will work just fine for our power level. And that's kind of what the motto is for a lot of this stuff. So I've already taken one side out. It's just a matter of four bolts, slide the axle out, I'm gonna show you on this side what I have to do. Yep, everything still looks perfect in this thing, honestly. And that's why we're using it. A Little bit of the good stuff on each of these studs. And like I said, it's just as simple as four bolts, top and bottom. Break them all loose. Last one. Don't forget your brake line. Make sure that comes off. Slip that axle out. Then we'll slide our backing plate with our brake assembly over the axle, up and out, and we're done. I'm sure there's a lot of questions as to why did we keep the four lug? Now here's the main reason. I really, really enjoy the wheel and tire combo on this car. It's a 15 by nine all the way around, and it just really looks and rides nice. The bad part about it is that it is a four lug. I don't mind it, I think it looks pretty cool, and with our current power output, we're not gonna break an axle, we're not gonna hurt anything, because this car is really not that powerful yet. So, 
With that being said, I want to show you this. Here's our stock axle. Now see how it kind of necks down into a smaller size and then you see the splines? That's a problem. This is a 28 spline axle. Now what we have here from Quick Performance is a 31 spline axle and it's still a four lug. But that's not going to be a problem. It doesn't neck down. It's all the same diameter all the way through. This is way stronger than any power output we're going to be putting down with this car in its current form and it's going to be just fine. So, like I said, super simple to swap over to five lug, but this will get us up and running as quickly as possible. And might I add, look pretty good? Yeah, I think so. The axle housing is in the car. And what's great about Quick Performance is that you can literally piece together any kit you want from mild to wild. Say you've already got parts and you just need a center section. Say you just need some U-bolts. Say you just need an axle housing and you've got everything else. You can do that. Since I had nothing, we started from scratch. We got everything. So that included the housing. We've got all new hardware, uh, including these nice, pretty three inch U-bolts. And then under here, we got the center section studs. So all that was pressed in, really simply done. So the actual housing itself is hard mounted. Everything is good. You can see it's holding up the weight right now on the wildfire uh, lift here at the jack. So what I'm going to do now, I've got my gasket. I've got a center section that you guys need to see because, oh my goodness, is it amazing. Let's go check it out. Oh gosh, this thing is so heavy. Oh, oh. I can barely pick it up. Wow. Look what we got here. <laughs> Whew. We've got a Yukon center section with a 1310U joint. So it's all factory application. 370 gears, and by golly, is this thing not beautiful. I'm gonna go set this thing down. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. Here's a better look. Is that not amazing? All new internals, everything brand new. You can see the wear pattern in there. Again, 370, that's gonna be a ton of fun. Now we can install our new axle seals. Just get a little tap tap in there. This kit also came with all brand new studs because all the other ones that were on that old axle housing, they were nasty, especially being from 1977. So it's just best to go ahead, they're not expensive. Just get some new studs, man. Doesn't hurt anything. And man, does it look good with all this new housing. Don't want rusty bolts on stuff, do you? Don't answer that question. Now I'm gonna slide our backing plate on. Well, of course, the Mustang II had to fight us on the very last piece. So, you'll notice that the axle's bolted in, but there's no drums. So, these backing plates are kind of an oddball flange. The axle flange is different on my backing plates here versus what's on the 9-inch. And uh, just some oversight. Neither one of us expected that. It's just how it is. What the Quick Performance told me that it was very similar in what they normally see on like a Pinto. So that makes sense. I mean, this car is very similar to that. So what we're gonna do is uh, I stack two washers in between the, the flange and the axle housing just to make sure we're compensating for the gap that's not there with the backing plate. So the axle is securely bolted in. And when I get to Ford Fest, Quick Performance was kind enough, they're great people, to overnight me backing plates, full drums, wheel cylinders, all the hardware and adjusters and everything so that way we can get to the autocross, hopefully Friday afternoon, maybe. Just depends on when it gets here. So all that I have left, I gotta put a U-joint in the drive shaft, I've gotta fill it up with some oil, and that's it, at least for now. So y'all say a prayer, we make it. We're about to back this thing off after I do those couple small things, but let me just go ahead and show you this. Does that center section not look extremely beefy? Oh my gosh, does that look cool? Yes, absolutely everything is a win right now. I don't care whatever happens after this point. The fact we have that in there, that's enough for me.
We've got this rear end going in the car and that's gonna provide a lot of low end, just seat of the pants feel with those 370 gears in the back and a nine inch. Now, of course, this little tired 302 needs a little extra get up and go. That's where nitrous oxide comes into play. I've never dealt with this before, but I'm super excited to do it. We've got a complete kit here from Holly. Uh, we've got our solenoids here, some extra fuel line, all the line we need. Uh, we've got some hose clamps, fittings, filters, wide open throttle switch, and we're going to be using this square bore uh, nitrous plate. So it's a really simple setup, really easy and cost effective to make it work. Uh, we're gonna run for a hundred shot. Don't wanna go too crazy. Don't wanna blow this thing up, but we do wanna have some fun with it. This tired 302 has got a little bit of life left in it. So we can at least set this up to where we can use it for the next engine we actually go with. Now, to make sure all this is okay, we got some supporting mods so that way we don't really starve the engine of fuel. Because whenever you're shooting nitrous, you're also shooting fuel at the same time. A little bit of extra nitrous needs a little bit of extra fuel so it doesn't start to rattle the pistons and blow a hole in the block. Now to make all this work, we've got an upgraded quick fuel fuel pump, 110 gallon per hour, and a regulator to match it. So this will be plenty to supply all the things we need fuel related. And we also have some fittings from Earl's Vapor Guard as well as some Vapor Guard hose. So I cannot wait to see how this thing responds to a little bit of power adder. I've got the bottle getting filled currently, so it'll be here in just a little bit. So while we're waiting, let's go ahead and start from the front work on this plate, get all the fittings plumbed up, all the lines and extra hoses that we need, and then we'll work our way back to the bottle. Well, it's on the ground, able to drive off the lift at this point, maybe. Moment of truth, I did everything right. It should go into gear. Neutral. It is running, that's good. We didn't install the nitrous kit fully yet, but we have all the parts with us to do that when we get there. We've got all the fuel line plumbed, so that's good. Okay, reverse. Oh, <laughs> we're moving. Oh, is the throttle cable hooked up? No, it's not. I forgot to hook up the throttle cable. That's okay, though. Sweet. Come on off there, buddy. There you go. Uh-oh, what the heck was that? I don't even care at this point. It's off the lift. Woo! Man, that was a night. Wow, we did that in less than 24 hours. Didn't have half the parts because I didn't know what I needed and didn't need. Uh-oh. What is that? Is that fuel? What is that? Oh, that's brake fluid from the other rear axle. Shoo! Folks, let me tell you. <laughs> what a mess what a mess we have made here but i don't care i'm getting that on thing on the trailer i'm gonna back it out we're gonna wash it just a little bit spray off the the green and then we are gonna put it on the trailer and we are driving to bowling green i realized we left pretty much in a hurry as soon as the uh cobra backed out of the driveway i loaded it up we packed the truck up and we left so <laughs> If you want to see more detailed video on uh, our experiences on our way to Ford Fest, if I have posted it already, it'll be up there. If not, subscribe so you don't miss it. But the Cobra, no rear brakes, but quick performance has got it on the way. So we will be able to do something here in just a little bit. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow in the Cobra. I just realized I didn't even clean the spiders and the moss off this car before I took it out to go to a show. Golly. Rough owner over here, am I right? Golly, this guy. The Mustang is ready. Well, kind of ready. It's low on power steering fluid, about a quart low of oil. But it's got coolant in it, so that does help. Uh, we're gonna get it into the show. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. So first things first, we need to get the nitrous system finally finished and hooked up. And then we can start working on the rear brakes to make sure all that's sorted out. 
because we're gonna go autocross racing at some point, either today or tomorrow, just depending on how parts show up. We just got gas, uh, the Ford over here, it's doing well. Everything's pretty much good to go. And we just need some ice for the cooler and we're headed into the track. <laughs> we made it into the venue. Briar is, I, think, I hope he's behind me. I have no idea where he's at, but I hope he followed me. We made it to Ford Fest. <laughs> Parking right next to Bigfoot. I needed inspiration. Oh. Well, this looks fancy. Well, it's a little fancy. Well, here we are. We've got our nitrous plate and everything sorted out, I think. We've got the bottle just kind of chilling out. We got to mount it. I ran my line right up to it found a good spot in the firewall where the uh throttle cable comes through and that should work i hope mounted our fuel pressure regulator and it's got a t going to this that'll go to our fuel solenoid pressure regulator uh, going to a gauge over to the carburetor we just took it off so it's working uh, we don't know what we're doing but hopefully it works by the end of this so all i got to do is add this to the plate here and That'll work pretty nice. What better place to install your nitrous kit than at the drag strip, you know what I mean? So we've got a little bit of a hackery going on here. The uh, carburetor doesn't fit with the nitrous plate because the line with the solenoid hits the accelerator pump diaphragm. So I've got the nitrous plate and then a uh, three quarter inch spacer on top of that to get it all to work. I think I'm gonna have to cut a hole in the hood to make that work but i don't care so we're just gonna plumb everything up get it good and tight yeah that works perfect let's see if it actually will work Brand new, set up, ready to go, and it'll actually fit on the car. Sweet. Well, all we gotta do is slide these axles out and uh, pop these on and slide them back in. We got a brake line. This is easy stuff, man. I love this. Almost, I got this this brake line almost tight. Look at there, we've got brakes and it works. Everything's bled, we got it back on the ground. 
So I went and got my tech inspection. And guess what, folks? We passed our nitrous line, ran. We didn't hide anything, we didn't lie. So everything worked out for the better. So uh, tomorrow, we're gonna come back to the show and we will be autocrossing, drag racing, all the good stuff as long as this car holds up and actually performs. So that is a wrap for day one of Holly Ford Fest. We're packing up right now. And uh, we didn't really look at the show a whole bunch, but I'm sure we will tomorrow. But you know, the cool thing is we get to hang out with Bigfoot, so that's pretty cool. I mean, if I asked him politely, I bet he'd run over the Mustang. That was really, really nice, I bet he would. So really cool day today. Awesome people, awesome venue. I love coming out here. Good morning. Ford Fest, day two. Briar's got him a snack. What you got? You know, cherry Sundrop. Anybody like Cherry Sundrop? It's great. I, I'm, eh, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, the Mustang is together. We put the brakes on yesterday. Uh, we got the oil in the rear end. This thing's running good. We had a problem this morning. Uh, had a fuel line that was leaking and the voltage regulator, I accidentally unplugged it, so it wasn't charging at all the whole time it was running. So I, I started it up, let it run for a little while. We're gonna do Grand Champion today, autocross, and then maybe drag racing later. I'm really curious to see how these do. Um, I got here and realized I did not check the oil or the power steering fluid. Uh, both were a quart low, so it is what it is. But we're good now, we are good now. So, Briar, you're gonna be running autocross today. Are you a little nervous, excited? Huh? Excited? It's, it's honestly very fun. Cause this car, by the time you get done driving it, you're sore. Like, cause it throws you around everywhere. But it's so much fun. So, I hope we have seat belts at work. I know mine works, I don't know about it. You can just, just sit still. Yeah, you got it, you got it. So we're gonna be running today, I'm excited. Can't wait to see how she does. It's gonna be a good day, folks. So last year, I had my stickers. I was 670. You can see where it was, it pulled some of the paint off, so. I guess the best way to kind of hide that is to Nah, this car ain't worth the magnet paper, unfortunately. <laughs> Look, it's covered. You'll never know. Better. Three pedal and fasten itself out of Fisher's Hill. Time making a single pass here at this last 
We have vacuum caps and the thing keeps backfiring. It's running kind of lean. I don't know what the deal is differently. Maybe the fuel pressure is too high or something. I don't know, too low. Um, but I had blew the cap off here. So I got that one on and I'm gonna clamp it down like I had it before. And uh, I've got this, so a uh, kind gentleman let me borrow it. So we're gonna clamp that down. vacuum leak and it seems like it's actually a little bit more responsive now but uh i kicked out briar so that i can uh actually do a, a you know a proper run to see how it does without the weight savings. so he only weighs like you know 40 pounds anyway so uh we're gonna do a run now uh just kind of let her hang out and see what happens Second gear and it was it wasn't good. So 
I, the problem I'm having, which I think will help in the drag strip, but the problem I'm having is split gears. I'm running out of engine in first gear because, of course, it's fast enough to do that, but the car is too slow in second gear, so you're kind of stuck in between. So, realistically, a good like 410, 430 would be the ideal thing for auto cross, but or just a really hot engine. I don't know, but anyway, 50 0. It's okay. I've done 49 6 the last run. That's the best one I've done so far. Um, but also at Briar, which I told them you weighed 40 pounds. So that's hey. you know, some extra weight. <laughs> so, well, uh, I'm proud of her anyway. At least it's here. We ran the best of a 49.6. I think we could do better if the brakes were more adjusted. I had them so loose in the back that we were maxing out the master cylinder. So we're going to tighten them up for the next run and uh, hope that that helps. So it's all good. At least the car's still together. The rear axle's awesome. I mean, it's fantastic. I just need to, I'm having to split gears. I'm stuck in between first and second. Like first doesn't have enough RPM, or it has too much RPM, I guess you could say. And we're going past what the uh, power band is. And then you're going into second gear and it starts to lug on the bottom end. So it's just kind of a, a delicate balance, basically. Everything's fine. fine. It's just an LS, right? Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's just an LS. That's why we got the LS guys here working on it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so you Godzilla swapped. What year is it? 69. 69. What a madman. 14 days. How much have you slept in those 14 days? Not enough. <laughs> Even last night I managed to only get five hours, which is more than I got. But you're here. Yeah, we're here. We're well, I hope to hear it run here shortly. Yeah, that's all that matters. You got this far. We're eating chips. Right. It's a great day. It could be worse. This is sponsored by Blaze. <laughs> Briar, have you ever seen drifting? Uh, I've done a little bit myself. You drift a little? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So, Briar, what year is your truck? 97. He's got a 97 short bed, and this dude is a maniac. A <laughs> He'll come up to a stop and just <laughs> slide all the way around. We're gonna go look at some drifting real quick. Let's see what's going on here. Whoa! So the Mustang, it's a, uh, it's a little weird. The brakes, you really got to mash on them to get it to stop. And I think it's just that I don't have the rears adjusted properly. So we're going to go tighten them up and uh, I've got a, you know, vacuum leak stopper 3000 in my hand. And uh, we're going to go over to quick performance. The car has been parked over here because they were kind enough to allow us to have this nine inch and it helps a ton. So. We're gonna try and adjust them out here before we do the last autocross run and see how much fun we can have with it. So if you need an axle, any kind of nine inch, anything really, they make them for all kind of stuff. Quick performance is the way to go. Briar, you're not trying if you're not smacking the bumper with a handle, come on. There you go, a little better.
There you go. Honestly, it's kind of nice under here. It's nice and shady. So we got them adjusted, and I don't think that the shoes were even touching. You holding the pedal? So now I can, Briar can hold them still. They're much tighter. They're probably tighter than they need to be, but I need to be able to stop. Like we were not using the rear brakes at all out there, but now it should feel much better. So that'll help a ton on our times, because I was having to fly, but I'm, I'm slowing down way too early. So I'll be able to just kind of get a little bit more wild with it. But we're what time is it now, Briar? What is today? Saturday, 2.15. Where are we? I don't even... I don't know, my mind's gone. It's too hot for this. It's too hot for all this nonsense. But we're having a blast. So we got one more run for today. We're going to see it, how it does. If it gets, if they're too tight, then we'll uh, back them off. But I think that's going to help a ton with our times. for the last round of autocross we've got good brakes we've got a car that hopefully will work Allie's in the car with us this time she's gonna go for a ride and Briar he's in, in the back with the sun drop and two helmets all right you have to ride back there you can't we're not gonna let you get out okay it's over r.i.p Briar <laughs> yeah so we're gonna get some laps in hopefully we can have a a good run, better run. We're gonna get, we're gonna break at least 48, Briar. I'm gonna call it tonight. We're gonna break 48. I'm gonna drive a little harder now that I've got better brake pedal. So we are ready to go. think about that alley I think we can go faster well we're done with the uh, autocrossing and Briar is buttoning up the last of our install for that beautiful nitrous bottle oh, the sniper nitrous is gonna be good so what I've done is I plumbed in a T fitting with a pressure gauge and then this goes to our fuel solenoid so it's got a trigger switch an arming switch inside the car and then a wide open throttle switch right here so whenever I push this you can hear them click so they're armed. So whenever it's matted, it'll go all the way to that switch. All right, Briar, we're gonna check for leaks real quick. So open her up. Whoa. Oh, close it. Close it quick. 
Well, I forgot this little uh, nylon O-ring here. That should fix us up. That's what happens when you get in a hurry. Here we go, fixed. Staging lanes, uh, it's like 7.30. Uh, I'm just gonna do three runs of nitrous and see how it does. Uh, it's a little nerve wracking, but I think it's gonna be fun. It did a pretty good hit on the road, uh, on a closed course that is. So just waiting on our turn at this point. my nitrous line the wire came off on the uh, wide open switch and then uh, uh, I missed a shift I missed third third gear I missed it so I got an 18 it was terrible we're gonna try it again though Thank you. <laughs> she quit. We still ran a 16-0. Heck. All right, this one's for all the money. I'm running it as hard as I can.
front, but it felt like a good time. It hooked pretty hard. We'll see how we did. Thank you, sir. Dang. We had a 15-1. I was so close to the 14s. She's mad. Something's not happy. I'll tell you that much. She's running a little rough. I don't know if you can hear that. Listen. She's got a little misfire. I smell some nastiness. She might be hurt. I'm not sure. Did it idle okay? Yeah. Still, I mean, it's just kind of had a lower RPM. It's just kind of mad. Freaking shut off on me on the staging lane whenever I did the burnout. Probably ran out of fuel. But hey, you know what? I wanted to break into the 14s. A 15 one. If I had been able to do this Friday, we probably could have done it. But, you know, it is what it is. We probably could have thrown a 150 shot at it for all I care. But it's done, and I'm happy. We've improved since last year, and that's exactly what I wanted. All right, that's a, a wrap for day two of Ford Fest. The Mustang still runs as of right now. It may not tomorrow, but I don't care. It's very loud here. It's like nine o'clock. I'm done. I've had so much fun here though. This is a great event. We'll check out the car in the morning, see if it's okay. And uh, I'll see you then. Morning. It is the last day. The Mustang has proved herself worthy. I am very proud of her, but it's only uphill from here. We've got to continue making this thing better and better every year. The nitrous bottle, I mean, it was awesome. That made up a whole second there. <laughs> Just added the nitrous and the gearing, of course. Um, actually, over a, I, I mean, I, I had a 16.7 last year, Briar, and I ran a 15.1 last night. That's a, what, 1.6 seconds? That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. So I'm very proud of that fact. I mean, one and a half seconds on a drag strip is very good. And really the limiting factor at this point is uh, the engine. I mean, when you're running a basic bone stock, low compression uh, 302 with just a mild cam and a vacuum secondary carburetor, it really doesn't do a whole lot in the form of a, you know performance, but that's okay. And I'm, I'm still happy with how this thing turned out. We've got everywhere to go we have so much room for upgrades and so much room for making things better on this car and that's exactly what i intend to do as we continue on with this but i don't know what's your stance on nitrous i like it isn't that fun just put it on every car i mean honestly i don't see why every car doesn't have nitrous i mean the power nation guys told us that every car should be able to handle 100 shot, 100 shot easily so i have to tend to agree because if this car held up to it i feel like just about anything should well folks i've got great news the Mustang lives on to see another day. We started it up the next morning, loaded it on the trailer, and drove it right to this spot. Nothing wrong with it, runs perfectly fine still, so I'm proud to say this little 302 did not blow up on our fastest quarter mile time that we've had in this car so far. Now, yes, a 15.1 is not fast. I will agree with you on that. But considering where this car came from, to run a 15.1 is phenomenal. I mean, I think from the factory they ran like a 17.7, <laughs> in stock form so you know we've got a, at least two and a half seconds faster than what the factory form is and we really haven't done a whole lot to it just mild engine upgrades with a cam four barrel and then of course the rear end the back and the nitrous system with all those things we were running 15 ones and i bet money if i had a little more seat time a little more practice with it i could have gotten to the high 14s that's pretty good that's booking it for a little stock mustang too now what i see in the future is to continue to improve on it. I wanna see a nice small block in this thing, like with some actual power and can actually hold up to some speed. And we gotta, of course, improve on the handling at that. So that's all I can see from going from here because every time we work on this car, we've improved on it. We've continually made it better. We've gradually built this car. We didn't have to you know, throw everything at it at once. We just continue to improve on it every time we mess with it. And that's what I like about it because you can drive a car and enjoy it and still make it better 
but still have a car at the end of the day. So this is exactly what we plan to do. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notifications, leave a like if you like this video. If you want to see more Mustang content, please leave a comment down below. Give me some recommendations on what you would like to see. Order your t-shirts and your stickers are down in the link below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.